Welcome to Pharmacology. In this last section for PUD, right? So just cover a little bit on the other drugs used and the overall regime for the treatment of it. Okay, so here um, we try to introduce another drug called misoprostol. So here is the diagram of how the COX-2 pathway works. So obviously it starts from the phospholip phospholipids. Uh, converted into arachinoidic acids, right? So there's COX-1 and COX-2 over here. So um, I think in the part A of the PUD, we've mentioned slightly about um, the COX-1, right? Whereby um, if you use um, non-selective NSAIDs for long term, you can actually inhibit both of the COXs if they're non-selective, so that it reduces the protection of the mucosa, right? By all these good prostaglandins, right? So, here, so look at the role of misoprostol. How does it work? So basically, it's a methyl analog of prostaglandin E, PGE, which is here. Actually, it appears both here, but mainly the effect will be in the stomach, so it's here. So, um, so it acts the same way as the normal physiological prostaglandin E, whereby it's inhibitory on the acid and also have the mucosal protective effects, right? So therefore, if you use it in combination with all the uh, PPI or uh, H2 antagonists that was mentioned in part B of the previous um, video, so it actually promotes the healing of the ulcers, right? So, but the half-life is really, really short because as I say, it's mainly in the stomach, Right, so half-life is just half an hour. So the person has to take it quite frequently, TDS or QRD, right? So uh, it does cause some side effects, uh, which are quite common, which is the diarrhea and abdominal cramping. Right, so there's another one called self sulcralfate, right? Sucral, sucralfate, sorry, right? So basically it's a salt of the sucrose complex to the sulfated, oh, so sorry for the wrong annotation, uh, aluminium hydroxide should be ALOH, the OH has bracket 3, right? So sucralfate, we actually are not so sure, we are not sure about the mechanism of action, uh, but basically they realize that this uh, molecule is actually negatively charged, so somehow it binds more to the positively charged proteins at the basal of the ulcer, so therefore it forms a physical barrier, so again a localized um, barrier, hopefully again to help the healing of the gastric ulcers, okay, right. So another one called bismuth, right. So okay. So the full name is pretty long. So it's tripotassium disitrate bismuthate. Okay. So again, not so clear about the mechanism. Again, it's theor theoretically it actually forms again a physical coating, right. So again to prevent um, the erosions, right, and the ulcers. Right, so all this um, what we call um, additive uh, physical protection they can give in stump in the gastric ulcer, they are not to be used as single agents. They are mainly as a top up agents from the others. Right, so then we we'll look through about a little bit about triple therapy later on as well. Uh, but the common side effect of bismuth is actually darkened tongue and also it can cause us black stool. So I think it's something that you should bear in mind in case someone comes into the. Um, approaches you and asks that say oh actually I have dark colors to you know is it cancer or whatever it's good to check whether it's the person on bismuth right it can also be caused by like iron tablets to cause black stools as well right so but bismuth uh, for prolonged use it actually causes toxicity with all the bad stuff as listed here um, but again bismuth is normally all this protective barrier stuff they are normally used short term anyway okay no don't go for long term Right, so here we talk about um, triple therapy, as you can see here, right? So the triple therapy, and there's a quadruple therapy. So um, these two regimes are targeted mainly for the H. pylori induced PUD, right? So when there's H. pylori, as mentioned, there's some um, bacteria. So obviously, you need antibiotics in there, right? So um, therefore, if the patient were to start on triple therapy, triple therapy, um, the prerequisite, so the main thing is the doctor would have to determine whether is a PUD, is the person's PUD uh, related to H. pylori, right? So they'll do the test, like the UAS test and things like that, as mentioned in part A. 
then if it's a confirmational yes, then only they'll start the therapy because there's antibiotics here, right? If there's no H. pylori, no point using antibiotics. Um, so the, com the common ones would be uh, clarithromycin uh, plus amoxicillin or metronidazole. I won't go through the uh, pharmacology of these uh, antibiotics because I think uh, it, would be, it was already covered in your other uh, anti-infective courses. Right, so you can combine with um, any of the PPI as you can see here. So Omi, Pento, Pento is a very common one, or Isomiprazole. Right, so quadruple. That's another one. So basically, the add-on here is the bismuth. Right, so Pento. Okay, yep. So for normal, uncomplicated cases, right? So it's just a week of treatment then. That's fine. So tangonus so far H pylori. Yes, they could have some resistance to bacteria to the antibiotic, but please stay as low as possible as currently. So now it's still quite straightforward. One week of treatment, uh, the person is normally cleared of it. Right. So yeah, check out about how the antibiotics work. Okay, even though it's not covered here. Right, so uh, as mentioned in part A, so the second more, most common reason of uh, someone getting PUD is due to prolonged NSAID usage, right? So if it's determined that someone is having, uh, is on long-term NSAIDs and presents with uh, peptic ulcers, so again, the first thing uh, the doctor might do is whether to check whether can the person stop taking NSAIDs, right? Because NSAIDs are normally taken as a painkiller. Uh, don't be over surprised that a lot of people are actually in chronic pain somehow, uh, back problem, you know, bone joints problem, rheumatoid arthritis, so on and so forth. So there's all sorts of reason that someone will be on painkiller. So if it's possible, we we'll try to stop discontinue the painkiller, right? Then we can start uh, the treatment of uh, H2 antagonists or PPR and so on. Right, and obviously they'll try to check whether there's any H. pylori as well. So that if there's H. pylori, if it's negative, we sort of continue with whatever you suggested here. If it's positive, again back to the triple therapy, triple therapy as mentioned earlier. Right, so another part about the NSAID induced also is that if the person is still in pain, you cannot continue, discontinue the drug. So you try to continue it at the lowest dose as possible, try to give it the shortest duration as possible, and also add on the PPI, right? And also try to switch it to a COX-2 selective inhibitor or try to add on the misoprostol as mentioned just now. And again, it goes down the same way as well. Okay, so yep, NSAIDs induce ulcer treatments. So yes, if you discontinue, these are the option, discontinue, da 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 da. Right, <coughs> um, so just a danger in a way. So for all acid-reducing medications, whether it's a H2 antagonist or PPI. Um, so one of the symptoms of gastric cancer is that there's increase of this acid secretion. So if you didn't really rule out a lot of things, um, whether the person is having gastric cancer or other intestinal cancers, uh, if the person is just started just on H2 antagonist or H2 antagonist or PPI, it can actually mask the symptoms, right? So, which is not good because if there's cancer, we try to detect it as early as possible for better um, recovery, right? So, make sure there's um, investigation. So, commonly at the current stage, um, endoscopy is quite commonly used now, right? So, um, if someone is having this pep dyspepsia, bleeding, and things like that, which is, um, you know, as, as, as mentioned in the symptoms part in part A, uh, if they are um, is suspected that it can be more complicated, maybe it's just due to uh, bleeding from the ulcers. So we we'll still um, call for an urgent endoscopy, endoscopy, right, to rule out whether it's cancer and so on and so forth. Right. So just bear in mind again about um, the risk uh, group, right? People, especially uh, patients for over fifty-five years old, as unexplained recent onset dyspepsia, that's not responding to treatment. Right, um, they are at a higher risk group for the cancers of the GI tract. So again, um, endoscopic is the first thing, again, the more important thing to do before they just take on any medication. Right, uh, but do bear in mind, um, although here they say that patients above 55 years old, but I think um, with our overall too modernized diet and lifestyle, 
um, actually the incidence of cancer is getting young um, into more younger people as well so again um, I don't think you should use this as a very rigid guideline in a way okay so if something is not too right right with all the dangerous symptoms or yeah it's just prolonged for example it's just prolonged and non-responsive go for further um, investigation go and see the doctor all right so early detection is vital right um, yep so another issue that I like to bring about is some drug misuse problem uh, especially for this misoprostol so uh, because it's a PGE analog it can actually sort of relaxes um, stimulates actually the um, the muscles the vaginal muscles and so on so it can actually if used at high doses it can actually cause abortion right so um, somehow some people are too clever so things which are used orally they put it in the vaginal causes the uterine contraction and so on so yep so apparently it's on our local newspaper some years ago so just bear in mind if someone is asking for a lot of misoprostol yeah maybe just do not supply to them something fishy going on so yeah always when all this serious stuff ongoing go and see the doctor right don't self prescribe it's just too gen too dangerous for anyone right too too dangerous right so um so this is a summary for all the drugs um that i think we sort of covered right including um those in the grd class and also the pud videos so hopefully you can based on all this you can understand what's going on with this busy busy slide thank you so so much have fun revising ta